This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy and other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. Two slots for Champion Soul are up for grabs. Two Latin powerhouses will fight for the first, and two of NA's finest will duke it out for the second. Hello and welcome to day two of the VCT America Stage 2 Playoffs, live from the Riot Games Arena in Los Angeles, California. I'm Uber, on the desk once again by popular demand with Brent and Sideshow. Gentlemen, great to have you back with us. I'm enjoying the sweater today. <laughs> They're always good. It, we haven't made a departure from the cats. This yep. one, though... Uh, is that natural selection? Is that what that's supposed to be? That, that <laughs> one's getting beamed up or, or what? Yeah, yeah, this one's getting taken away. They're going to form their own planet just with those uh, those T-Rexes on them. Oh. I, I don't think very Come back later and it. form the plot of a Michael Bay movie. Exactly. <laughs> Guys, great to have you here. The VCT 2024 season has been stacked and, and with incredible new faces as well. I mean, we've been very excited about our rookies as they've gone from Tier 2 to basically superstars overnight. So we're going to start the show by checking in on our rookie class and we should definitely be highlighting a few players this is a good point to look back at this incredible talent let's start by talking about mr absolute cinema himself it's mm. john qt who i cannot believe yeah i'm reminded that we're calling this guy a rookie it is kind of ridiculous he's been playing at the top level for a while but back before partnerships was really a thing that ghost squad that he was part of with kaplan and nismo for any tier two enjoyers out there yeah. still Love some m80 <laughs> nismo yeah, yeah it, it, He's been fantastic. He's a great addition to this team as well. They have kind of stumbled at the final hurdle right. here and they may not make champions. That would be a massive blow to any potential rookie of the year uh, candidacy that he's got on the line. Yeah, he's definitely made a name for himself though over 2024. I think he's been one of the best fragging IGLs that we had. Uh, oh, I think yeah. that's like, I think contention in America, at least with him versus Valen um, as, as one kind of just example there. But yeah, today they're going to be setting their sights on that first match, aren't they? All hopes and dreams really resting on Levia Tan. Every single Sen fan uh, alive, I think, just purchasing the Lev bundle. <laughs> uh, just setting up the candle rituals or whatever else. Yeah, just, just to try and get them through. I mean, they are going to be heavy favourites, but it's unfortunate it's not really in their own hands. But I guess that's what happens when you end up you know, losing the opening match players. Yeah, yeah funny, obviously, we, we are talking about this guy, even though his team is, is eliminated from, you know, America's playoffs. But, of course, those postseason dreams, the dream of soul is very much still on the line. Another team that has that same situation with an incredibly compelling rookie player. Even though Cloud9 might have been eliminated, Oxy was a game changer for this team over the course of the year. Really made a splash when he came in. And this is a guy that you could find on Twitter. Just basically being like, I'm LFT guys, LFT guys, I'm LFT guys, you know, in tier two, grinding it out. This guy made an instant impact. When he came into VCT, oh, he's had these high highs and then he's had some games where, you know, understandably, kind of gone missing. Yeah, and I think at the beginning of the season, you were seeing more of the running it down mid and yeah. losing rounds for his team and that very quickly disappeared and mostly what you got from him this year were excellent performances on a team that was a little sloppy i think he's a player to really watch for the future especially if he gets a more structured team underneath him can he be a player that's calling for his own utility rather than just having the game set up around him does he develop that mature outlook that you need to be a top tier duelist uh, he's got so much of his career left to go and so much of our conversation yesterday was that who he was surrounded by, right? Uh, you know, is he surrounded by the kind of people that could raise him up when he's sort of down in the in the doldrums and the dumps a little bit? Mm. Uh, you know, is there someone to you know put with Oxy that can really unlock him? Yeah, I mean, potentially brain rot TikTok content <laughs> uh, would would really, I think, get get the most potential out of it. You don't it, think he's already? Come, he's, he might already be there. An ADHD diagnosis. I'm yeah, pretty yeah, sure yeah. You uh, yeah, I mean, I did say that. That, that did come out of my mouth. But <laughs> I, I mean, listen, he's already. I think. When you're thinking of players, like up-and-coming players, maybe like with Zekin, I could see Zekin with the potential to be like a really top player 20 years from now. Maybe 20 years? years? So, listen, 10 years from now, I was going to say, you, know, you could see him like into like an IGL duty. I've really got okay. a lot yet, of... Isn't it? Yeah, very very strong-headed about Valorant's future <laughs> and the success of him Sorry. moving forward. He's got 20 years. But Oxy, I, I take Oxy as a guy that's just, um, I don't know, he's just kind of, you wind him up, you let him loose. I can't really see... Just add water? I can't really see much maturity in him. Like, you know, do you know what I mean? Just He's just kind of like you, the You're cracked. a very different guy 
four years ago. That's very true. I mean, his frontal lobe could develop. Confirmed. <laughs> it's, it's That's very, very true. The frontal lobe development goes crazy in the early 20s. So, I mean, we could see him as a completely different okay. human. Um, but yeah, he's a fantastic player. And um, uh, yeah, move us on. I'm, we, well, us I'm on. going to. We're going to have to talk about what happened yesterday on stage because we had back-to-back -back elimination matches to start off our playoffs. First, it was relevant. Crew Visa versus Cloud9. Now, we just seen these two teams play and we had a best pick for map one, Josh. Already the stage was set for a pretty fascinating clash. Yeah, and a couple of lost eco rounds uh, where Cloud9 had the weaponry and suddenly their gamble of taking Crew to Abyss did not look so good. Uh, they then got up to an 11-1 lead on map one oh! and then they threw it oh, all away. Boy. So was that 13-11 in the yeah, end on that map? Yeah. yeah, so all in all, a, a big one for Crew to be able to take, but wobbly at the end, even still from Cloud9. Let's move on. Let's talk about Sentinels versus 100 Thieves. Again, all of us except Rivington expected Sentinels to come out on top in that game. History spoke fondly of Sentinels in this matchup, but on this particular day, gents, it was not to be. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'll, I'll dish out a bit of that copium, I think, for the Sentinels with it. It wasn't really the same team. They didn't have the same setup. They're, you know, scrimming. They were moving around a lot of different players. Didn't even know if they were going to be playing with Sassy as well into this. Um, and even John QT as well later saying didn't want to give excuses. But you know, he was he was playing throughout that match with a little He's bit in of some pain, pain right? right? Yeah. And so yeah, I think Sentinels I mean, ended up dropping the ball, but on the you know that is, that, that is yeah, that is. Yeah. I mean, Sentinel role. Someone's got to do it. You know, that is a painful position. But yeah, hundred thieves sandbagging this entire time. Yeah. Actually, a good team. <laughs> Just decided to pull that one out. The fans were absolutely losing it ahead of the match. They were they were calling upon everything, divine intervention essentially, to try and win it as soon as you told them that, that entire scoreline. But they pulled it across in a 2-0 fashion as well. Yes, 100 Thieves just looked like they were back to their peak. And I think this match summed up the difference between peaking at the right time. Yes. Right? You have one game that defines whether or not you're going to be into the top four for playoffs. Can you step up when it matters? And Sentinels had issues. 100 Thieves stepped up Who in the moment. A terrible start to stage two. Let's be clear about that. Citing all sorts of like adjustment issues coming back from Shanghai and trying to get ready to play. So remember, Sentinels do qualify still, even though they're out of the playoffs in America's, if Leviathan makes top three. Now that. All they need to do is get a win. One win would make them top three. So that's what you're hoping for right now. But let's now go over and look at our playoff bracket, which, of course, we're into the double elimination phase of now. Just those first two matches were single Elim. So we've got Crew versus Leviathan here. A win for Lev, again, will guarantee Sentinels champions, for those wondering. And G2 go up against 100 Thieves. Talking to EU yesterday, he's like, bro, we always play these guys. We <laughs> always play these guys. I mean, especially matches. for him. He was playing them last year yeah, as well. Ascension, also all the way too. through. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but I think a lot of people have their eyes on that top bracket. Not just the Sentinels fans, but also crew believers. They need to be able to get a win either in the top or in the bottom. Right? But wins here lock you for salt. Yeah. Today, I mean, yes. if you, for some of these teams as well, I mean, Lev have already, at this point, if they bombed out, it would mean bad things for Sentinels. <laughs> yeah. But it would mean bad things for Lev. Exactly. Lev can be quite happy bombing out. I mean, maybe not happy with the fourth seed of America's, but... If you see Aspas coming in today, just sipping a margarita, just, <laughs> just, just wandering in, yeah. then Sen fans get really, really scared. It's cooked. <laughs> it might be cooked. All right, so I'll get a question for the desk. If I gave you a cypher cam, because apparently there's the technology to do this, uh, how, where would you take a selfie? Um, not what part of you wear? Black oh, rock boardroom, insider trading. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, Nancy Pelosi's yeah, on Yeah, exactly, <laughs> okay, okay, exactly. Okay. We're making some inside trend. I don't know. Is it, is it map specific? It could be anywhere you want, Josh. Um, uh, uh, on a beach, chilling, <laughs> vibing. <laughs> Do I look like I got you a You won't see the beach in years, mate. That's what I'm putting out there. All right. Well, we <laughs> asked the same question to our players in this installment of Profiles. Where would I take a Cypher Cam selfie on Valorant? I would most definitely pick Breeze, just because I can just be on the beach and probably in the attacker spawn. I'd go to Icebox, I'd go to the mountains. I'd fly to the mountains on Icebox and I'd catch a pick like I'm on, I don't even know what mountain, like I'm on Mount Everest. I'd take an insane pick up there. On the, on a sense, there's like a graffiti of like a little like camel or like a dog. So I'll take a selfie in front of that. In Split, on the A bomb site where the um, it's uh, where like the flight paths are, then you know I'd be standing right in front of the screen with the cam right there, just taking a nice picture, ready to board my flight. Breeze at A main on the old patch on the last kill crash he's got versus Pancada for us to win Iceland and the hallway because that was a memorable moment. Ash 
que seria no Long Yada Ascent, é uma posição que eu sempre gostei muito de jogar, talvez ali pelo vinho. Acho que seria ali. My first thought. A uh, bunny in Midhaven. I would take it. I'll take my selfie cam on Lotus above sea site where there's a bunch of pretty flowers. Uh, it'll be on Pearl. It was B long and there's a big pillar. I would put the camera in front of me and then when all the enemies are running at me, I'll just have the, the camera looking at me. Colocaria na colocaria de frente pro o spawn de CT da Split, de defesa da Split, colocaria ela apontado para para mim assim, onde mostra umas lojas de tênis e umas lojinhas atrás de mim. Tiraria assim. There's like a spot on Split. I think it's like outside a lobby and there's like a coffee shop. So I would stand right in front of the coffee shop and place it on the wall and make it look at the coffee shop. Yeah, we love the sideshow coffee shop, that's for sure. Let's get into today's first matchup. It's going to be Leviathan versus Crew Visa. Now, on paper, Lev is probably the scariest opponent in all of America, right? They've got so many of their players in the top four and a bunch of different stats here. Uh, and they've kind of had Crew's number most of the time. They look incredible. This regular season has just been spectacular. And not just in stage two, but also the four and one in the beginning of this year. It's been perfection from them. Uh, and yet there have been wobbles earlier on in the year and the teams they've beaten aren't the best teams so far in stage Are two. Are they just regulation Ronalds? Because when they go internationally, <laughs> you, it's a different story. It, it does make me really concerned, I think, as well, because it's a, it's a sticking point, but not enough because, I, I don't know, I'm so willing to jump on a team, the bandwagon of a team, looking good in, in form at the moment, at a given moment, but if, if this is the sticking point for them where they're just unable to turn up when it actually matters. For example, Shanghai, the playoffs of stage one, and now we're in stage two playoffs and we haven't seen them play yet. And it's important and all the Sen fans are clamoring and they need them to win. But also the weird thing is it's actually not as important for Leviathan. Exactly. It's about the seeding, it's about <laughs> winning here as well. But if they don't, maybe you can argue that the heads weren't in it. It's a really weird situation for Leviathan. I mean, we don't talk about seeding there because again, the last thing you want is running into like a fanatic or PRX or someone ridiculous in Seoul straight off the bat. Right, yeah. this definitely has yeah. value to them. Send fans, take note. This yeah. is, you know, they, 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 and again, this team hasn't what dropped a map at all in stage two. And neither yeah. had Sentinels until they faced up against G2. Okay. It's all about the teams you play against. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Okay, so the numbers are pretty intimidating, as you saw uh, on that sheet. And of course, Aspas is someone who will strike fear into the heart. So basically, anybody. The guy is. Again, we, we talk about him as a hard carry and on the scoreboard, okay, that manifests, but, uh, you know, he's set up extremely well. He's also, as the players have talked about, pretty self-sufficient. Yeah, he can I, go and do his thing and actually not be a resource drain. It's one of the things that I've liked the most, I think, about watching Leviathan and this evolution that they've gone is that they don't just need Aspas to drop 30 for a, for a big yeah. map win these days. And, um, I mean, it's been mainly a bit of a team effort, Josh. When we were casting this team as well, you were particularly impressed with a lot of the individuals turning up and just supporting it. I was, but you always have to remember that they have Aspas at the tip. Even if everything else isn't working, Aspas is always going to be there dropping bombs on his opponent. Yeah. And especially in a game like today where he's playing against a team that loves taking fights, Aspas is going to feast. But yes, you're absolutely correct. I love the rest of this team and how they've stepped up too. I think that's been the biggest difference between what we saw from them previously and what we're seeing now. Aspas hasn't really changed. He's just always a god. But the rest of the team, especially King and Mazzino to me, where you're seeing King's kills per round, especially at 0.8, is pretty ridiculous. Uh, they're getting a lot of value out there, the, the rest of the squad for Leviathan. And again, like some of those stats, I think we, are, I've seen like the top 10 ACS. I think we've got three players from Leviathan yeah. in here. I think King yeah. and Mazzino were like third and fourth respectively or something like that. So definitely a full team effort. Let's check in though with Com, who is in the top 10 of that ACS stat, as I remember, and hear what he had to say to Elizabeth ahead of today's matchup with Cruvisa. Now, Calm, coming into Stage 2, Leviathan have been absolutely on fire. And coming into Stage 2, Ido Pata joined as the head coach. What has Ido Pata done for this team that has made you all so successful this stage? Um, I think he's really instilled fundamentals in us and also has helped us a lot, like, kind of be more free in-game. I feel like before, we were kind of, like, very rigid and, like, very, like, structured, I guess. But now we're a little bit more loose and free flow. Do you guys think you've shown your, you know, fullest potential and your true selves during stage two with the teams you have faced? Mm, I think we still need to like say that we had like a full test. I feel like a lot of the teams we played are not doing the best right now, but 
I think at the end of the day, like we go game by game and just like try to show our best face each game. Well, best of luck today. So I kind of want to circle back on that a little bit here and talk about the impact the coaching change has made on this roster. Sort of, if at all, I think that Levitan maybe weren't happy with what happened during the mid-season. Yeah, definitely. And come out of Shanghai, made these changes, have looked squeaky clean. So let's talk about the impact of Ido Pata on this team. I, I think it's really bizarre, to be honest, because not many teams are going to make a switch up like this where they just end up bringing up their assistant coach, right, at the time, into that head coach position and seeing such radical improvements. I mean, that's either... either listen, all the team meetings that were being held that nobody had a talking stick and you all had to just follow the word of the head coach like the, the or is this causation versus correlation I, it might be i i don't know I, I think sometimes you just need a fresh start for a team as yeah. well you load all of your burdens onto one player boot them out the door and get a new guy in and for him uh, this is it apart his time to shine but he has made changes in terms of flexibility with the team and i think somebody like mazino in particular he's not a structured guy he he excels in the scrappiness very loose you see him how he takes his fights he's on breach and he's like flashing for himself and running in and trying to trying to work with the phantom in a way that's to do with the movement. Most same the breach player, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but that's a good thing to have, especially for a super team. Like, these players are good. Go out there, let them find their own timings. Not everything has to be, you know, like the previous coach Structured. of King, owner level, by the book, five milligrams of protein every two hours, and you must go by the strap book. Just, just get them out there and If you guys can get shine. me like an IV drip, I will try that uh, and see if it works out. That's maximum bioavailability right there. It also sounds like the problems that 100 Thieves had last year with the really rigid structures that team would, would sort and, of... And also not a lot of support, I think, as well, was yeah. was plaguing yeah. 100 Thieves last year, because yeah. they, they pretty much only had mics at yeah, a certain point, right, right as, as the coach. But, but yeah, I think that it, it seems like freedom has turned a new leaf for them, in their minds at least, and, and sometimes that's the only thing that matters right, is what you perceive, not actually whether it's had tangible impact. Yep. Yeah. The well, placebo effect. I mean, like anything else that, you know, is too good to be true, which might be the, the changes to this team after Itapato's joined, there's a bit of a catch. Because, like, we've kind of hinted at, Leviathan is 19-4 and four in the regular season, but in tournament play, they're 13-14. and 14. This is mapped, by the way. So there has definitely been an issue. Yeah, this is the pre Itapato era, OK, in fairness. But this team really struggled to make an impact they came out of stage one playoffs, right? It was a, uh, you know, a pretty long one against G2. End up seeing them fall away from that one. They still represent internationally, and there they look. And I will quote you guys from Platchat: horrendous. At Shanghai, absolutely. It was abominable. I was, I was about to get Isak on the line watching that team. It was Shanghai, bad. Man. You guys, you guys were, were generally were, upset about that. They were bad. You do expect win rates to go down in playoffs because you play against better teams, right? That's just how it's supposed to work. But the manner in which Leviathan were losing, the stage one uh, lower bracket final where they played against G2, G2, massive cracks in what they were doing. The post-plant setups were terrible. Couldn't win a pistol round. Big, big problems. And that precursed heading into Shanghai where things just fell to pieces. So today, it's not just about getting the win, it's about Lev looking like they're a team that can actually win a tournament. This is supposed to be a super team. They need to be making super moves heading into champs. Yeah, it's about to get busy for them. We should probably talk about their map pool as well, as we've sort of checked in with a bunch of teams. Uh, because as well, we're discussing what lies ahead now, especially with Split, not an issue. Hey, that's, that's sort of fine for them. Uh, obviously, their Icebox and Sunset, definitely their, their best looks. Haven, Bren, you were sort of saying you feel like they're one of the most you know, well-drilled yeah, teams on Haven so far? It's a small sample size, but I think they look real good at Haven. And I think this is a map that actually their opponent's crew have shown that they like to float, they like to play on as well themselves. So I think it might end up being this middle ground map that is a really decisive moment for, for both of these teams, I think, to get their win here today. And the question I think that I just jump off the back of this is literally, can crew beat Lev on that map? Because I think it's going to be in a map pool. I think it's going to skirt its way through and both these teams are going to be wanting to play on it. And Lev's map pool is very, very good, but crew are also showing some elements, I think, that they are... They've kind of got it together, I think, on this map here. A lot of double setups are like just calling on the fly to double peek. What you're seeing here is just Kesnit is always going to be the first one in. It's this tasty piece of bait at the end of the stick and he sets up the rest of his team or just ends up getting this opening kill for them or just trading them out. This discipline has paved the way for Crew to get many successes in the past. And I think just evident from that, from what we saw of them the other day on Haven, I think they do have what it takes to potentially best them on that map if it comes to it. One of the other interesting factors, though, is that Crew floated a bit. They said Said that Kesnit said, our permaban is bind. Listen, we're just going to ban bind. So that means Abyss is being let through by one of the teams. We don't know if it's going to be let through by Leviathan, but they were previously banning Split. So they have the freedom to ban whatever they like here. The map that they hated the most, that they were 0-3 on, on this year, 
is now gone. It's gone. Yeah. So Lev's map pool, in theory, should be really open. We could see them go for a crazy abyss pick, but if not, they can keep things nice and simple. Something tells me if they've spent so much time on Haven, if they are as well drilled as you think, they might have elected to forego that prep on uh, abyss and might be looking to ban it. So we will find that out pretty soon. But we've got to ask about these guys because after yesterday's win against Cloud9, a result I think many of us expected, uh, right, is... Oh, God, why do they put mm. this in a teleprompter? <laughs> Is crew really going on another run? Is this happening? Question mark. It's a run! <laughs> it's happening! <laughs> no, I don't think so, uh, <laughs> This was oh, LCQ. LCQ. These, these guys <laughs> went zero and nine last year and then did this. I mean, what was it? <laughs> I can't, I'm just baffled. But look. We're look, not going to drag you out by your arms and legs again, Josh. That I know, but look intensive. at the games that they won. They played, they beat Leviathan here. They, they beat Leviathan in the grand finals. They've just overtaken C9. We just saw that as their opening game. And that was one of the really important matches they had to win last year, too. So I C9 into Lev, yeah. There's some similarities here in terms of the teams that they had to overcome. But the year is quite different. And I think the gap right now between Crew and Lev is bigger than it was earlier on in the year. Okay. All right. Well, last year, you know, Crew did manage to take Leviathan down to punch their ticket for champions, as we've seen on both occasions. So these two squads uh, arguably have a little bit of history between them. Yeah, they've met, I think, like 11 times uh, oh, yeah. in officials so far. So uh, really back and forth. Obviously, a very yeah, I mean, different, different lev look here. Crew definitely has had the edge, though, if we tally up all of those officials. I mean, historically as well, Crew is a team that's they've never missed the chaps, right? And so, they, listen, they've been through many iterations. There yep. was, you know, the previous era, the very ancient era, where they were basically a big fish in a small pond in terms of their right, region, region, always getting into every international event. Times have changed, um, but this is the historical matchup that you're seeing. Where do yeah. we start? Where First do we, we, we go to uh, Latam South? China. Challenges. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if you look at how it was way back when, Crew were the number one team in LATAM. Yeah. And then there was a point where it swapped, and Leviathan, as a full LATAM team, ended up becoming the best in the region. And then most recently, what you've seen is that Crew improved on that run towards the end of the year, obviously, beating them twice in LCQ. But generally, Lev are now the super team. They've somewhat abandoned their LATAM roots. Their superstar player... They're Brazilian still, yeah. Yeah, but their superstar player is Brazilian. They've brought on Tex and they've brought on Com as well. It's much more of an international roster. It's unique and it's providing them a lot of success, at least in regular season games. I want to circle back to Crew here because Heat's addition to the roster has paid some serious dividends, right? And was pretty promising out of the gates. Yes, Yesterday, in his win against Cloud9, he was plus 29. The guy, even on some fam unfamiliar territory, I guess, like Abyss, the guy was absolutely ruining C9. Really? Uh, he was. It's, he's coming to his own in a big way. Yeah, he was cleaning them up, I, I think, as well. And I'm so damn impressed. I, I feel like we mention this pretty often with this guy in terms of his... his you know, addition into this team. Not a lot of teams can do what they did with, in terms of heat and this almost like reinvention that he's had, where he's come on to these initiator roles and now he's dominating in terms of the setup, but also so willing as well to take matters into his own hands because he's got that mechanical ability to back it up. He knows in the past he's been a top player on the duelist. He's been diffing and putting a lot of these kids to bed even before he was born, <laughs> right? So, uh, I mean, he's... Without uh, bottles, it's like that. He's been around the block. And I think this, this new iteration, this evolution that you're seeing of him as a player is very, very nice. Yeah, it's the last two Brazilian players as well that we have in in the running. Yeah, Obviously, in Sentinels playoffs. could still make it, Sassy could still make it, but in playoffs, these are this is Heat versus Aspas. Heat as well only joined the team because MTA had an arm injury. That's right. And now MTA's back, they bench their IGL, and you get both of these guys out on the stage. It's been very fortuitous. They're, they've made use of what could have been a, a big downward spiral for them, losing that player at the beginning of the year, but finding Heat added so much magic to this team. Yeah, and someone that also was joined alongside Kesnit with that raw aggression, that will to fight oh, that yeah. we constantly see from Crew, which has very much become their identity. Let's send it back to Elizabeth, though, briefly, and hear from yesterday's match MVP. That's right, it's Heat. Now, he, you weren't a part of that legendary Crew run last year that we brought up, brought up since kickoff. Does Crew think that they can do it again? Of course. Simple as that. Well, what do you add to the team that's going to make that run happen again? Espera, uh... <laughs> traduz essa. O que você acha que traz para o time para repetir o que a Cru fez ano passado? Cara, acho que a calma e a tranquilidade. Eu tenho muito isso e vai fazer a gente se classifique, se Deus quiser. <laughs> yeah, I, I bring a lot of calm and I'm, I'm a very 
easy guy. So I think that's going to help us. All right. Well, last question for you is that you are the only team in America's thus far to show any form of abyss. Now that you are the only team to have any sort of record of it, is that become dangerous? Is that a perma ban for you now? Vocês foram o único time até agora, agora presente no playoff que jogaram na ABS, né? É, isso talvez vocês querem usar esse mapa como um perma bem? Vocês vão continuar? Vão querer não jogar mais nele? Ah, o mapa agora a gente vai jogar, né? Estreamos ganhando. <laughs> então queremos jogar sim, vamos continuar jogando e vamos ver no que dá. Oh, não, we, uh, we want to play that map again because we won. So, yeah, we want to keep playing it. I hope I see it. Best of luck. Howdy, folks. You're probably wondering what the hats are about. We're playing Hats Off. The desk will have to work together to figure out what's written on our hats. We guess right, the hat comes off. But there are some rules, folks. First of all, you cannot say the team name. You cannot say the teammates of said person. And you cannot say what their roles are. We are trying to help one another, I guess, divest ourselves of said hats. So I can get back to having people not realizing how fat my head is. <laughs> Should we start? Are we starting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it begins. Eat, With me? Eaten by a whale. Eaten by a whale? <laughs> Joan, Joan a pig? <laughs> yeah. Easy I'm stuff. Amazing. Uh, same height when he's standing up as opposed to sitting down. Boostio. Yeah, he's <laughs> right. Uh, nail it, nail it. Crazy. Um, uh, oh, my. Oh, Trent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, perfect. Um, OK, um, League of Legends. Career coach. John Riot. <laughs> John Riot. Why Career would that coach. be that? Potter's nemesis. Yes. Yeah. Easy, yeah. easy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. OK. Ooh. Ooh. Um, that's the spike! Melza? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. All right, all right. OK, uh, German. Oh, text. Damn. Yeah. 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 Easy clap. Damn. 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 It's so good at okay. this. Holy okay. spark. Damn, dude. Yeah. That's yeah. That's that pretty was good. good stuff. We I thought I'd be waiting that. for my rival in, you know, in Mount Moon in the end game for, for quite a while, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm. I'm going to keep the uh, the Bustio hat. Do you like that one? Did my hair, yeah, I mean, my hair needs help. That's right. OK, let's have a look at predictions here uh, because we have had to make them contractually as a broadcast team. And yesterday, a day that some of us would rather forget, outside of Rivington, who... I'm sorry. <laughs> he's a genius. Don't know how he's, he's, he's pulled that off. Right now. He'll include the whole predictions over the course of the season and I'm clearing you all. Really? Yes. What do you mean? I'm clearing you all. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty I'm pretty I'm I reckon you off the silly sauce for half this season. <laughs> no man, I, listen, I had like I think mean, 20 preds, which most people are like they only did like 10. Okay. And I had 65%. That's not bad. That's 60, not bad. 65% is pretty good. the highest sample size? Yeah. But you know what, don't you normally just hedge your bets and say the opposite of what you say on plat chat? So you're right. Sometimes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sometimes. Okay. Okay. Other times I get asked, oh, can you put in your preds? And I do it like when it's 11 p.m. and I'm bleary eyed and I don't know what it did. <laughs> right. And they say, I can't even remember what That it is did. why I think I predicted C9 that we'd beat against, win against Crew yesterday. I don't know what I was thinking. That you was you look so there. silly. You've lost all dignity <laughs> with those What do you mean? Answer. All dignity. I'm sorry, but, but your, both of your brand is about not caring about your dignity. All right, let's be very clear about that. Did did any of the talent end up predicting crew though on that one? I don't think anyone went for it. I, 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 I didn't look at it. I think we all say pretty safe on that two one. minutes. I mean, I guess we could pull Can it up. Can we fly it again? <laughs> well, I, I guess I should probably look at the, the, the assets that we put uh, I, on I screen. I think everybody went for Leviathan. Okay, thank yeah, you. All right, so actually game. look at it now. It no was. crew believers no here. Crew no believe. crew believers yeah. at all when Lev have not been tested yet. The, the best team that Leviathan have beaten was 100 Thieves throughout stage two. Yeah. And 100 Thieves themselves were in a slump a at slum. that point. They weren't playing anywhere near as well as they did just yesterday. So I think, I think crew got chances. We are, people are so bullish about G2. Bren, your case for G2 here against 100 Thieves? They're just, they're the perfect team for the armchair analysts. You look at them, they've got the discipline, they've got set plays, they have you know, these slow defaults, they have a fragging IGL, they have a team that picks up the parts themselves. There's, there's nobody just one person heavy lifting on the team. Like, they're not yeah. reliant on an individual dropping 30 to get wins. They're getting wins, like, the honest way. Is this, honest is this Leaf erasure, or...? Well, it's also Icy in the previous match erasure, because he, he's been on a steady upward grind, but and he, Icy... Is he, can he be that nuts. guy? I don't know if he can be that guy. Because Wyatt loves to call him a system duelist. Right. You know, it's, a way to, like, it's a good term. It also was accurate up until recent performances. What we've heard is that Icy and Scrims frequently drops 40. You don't like that? <laughs> <laughs> You're adding it to yourself. I think every time, like to every time it cuts to him, he wants to be wearing another hat. You know what I mean? <laughs> I threw the other one away, mate. I can't help you with that. <laughs> Average TF2 player. <laughs>
<laughs> get, get you a man that wears many hats. You're starting to look like one of them British Royal Guards from now with the, the look on your head. That's so great. Tall. Yeah. But I, I think there's... A, I think that game is going to be excellent. Okay. I think that if 100 Thieves are playing anywhere near they were in the previous game against Sentinels, that one's a banger. But this one, absolutely. We are, we're definitely on board with Leviathan here, right? Yeah. It's been such yeah. a clean stage two in general for them. Americus will be sending four teams to Seoul, and some of those will be locked in today. I'm getting pretty excited about it. It's Leviathan versus Crew Visa. It's G2 Esports versus 100 Thieves. Ladies and gentlemen, day two of stage two playoff starts right now. que tiene ese momento buscar la retoma sangre y fuego lo que sea vamos, vamos. Y, y ahora aparece Melzer Crew are the most aggressive team of everyone in playoffs <laughs> so nice. What is scary about them is that they do it really tight like they're always sticking together they just have insane aim and aggressiveness together. Leviathan creo que viene muy fuerte. Creo que no han perdido ni un ni un mapa. Siempre es bueno enfrentarse contra los mejores. Me agradecido igual de jugar nuevamente contra Aspas que un insano. Y nada, creo que el referente para todos como duelista. su casa es Genuinely wild and wacky match between Crew, Visa and Cloud9 yesterday sees the former advance to again take on Leviathan. Last time these two teams played, it was Leviathan knocking them out of the Stage 1 playoffs. And this is a team who've been squeaky clean all stage. Crew had to fight back almost from an 11 to 1 half yesterday and got within striking distance of Cloud9 before blowing them out in the last map of the series. But here, these are the games that matter. These are the games that give you a seat at the table, Champion Soul. Just for Libya Tan and crew as well, I mean, 
often we've been mentioning it over and over again, but Sentinels fans are going to be looking at this match, eager anticipation, praying for a 2-0 from Lev, or even a 2-1, I think they take at the end A of win the is a win. Anything yep. that would put Lev up and as that dominant seed in for the playoffs that would just lock Sen as that fourth spot. But Crew, this is a team that is used to fighting back, honestly. They're a scrappy team. They are willing to accept that they are the underdogs, I think, and willing to fight to prove that they belong. I love the fact that we're going to open up here on Icebox. It's an amazing map for Leviathan, but Crew loves setting Kesnit up for those lurks up B. He's very aggressive. He doesn't wait for Viper Walls. He looks to try to take fights and challenge. The Leviathan B anchors are going to have to watch out for that. Uh, I think this is a great map to get started because immediately you're going to have to focus on Aspas playing aggressive, Kesnit looking for duels, and hopefully that continues throughout the series. And last time, we got this map between these two teams. It was the same story. Both Aspas and Kesnit were really raking in the kills. Kesnit ends uh, at 23 and 19. Aspas was 28 and 15. So both these teams more than happy to send their respective jets on a collision course with one another. We know Levitan likes, obviously, to go with that harbor. Look on their setup, right? Yep. That sort of controller heavy approach. Here's our agent select to see if crew are going to continue to follow in their previous footsteps, and it would be no surprise here to see Jet locked away. I think we're going to see very standard compositions from both teams. They've refined what they've been working on. Lev have not adjusted to more modern metas by putting flashes into their composition on this map, but they're playing it really nicely. I think the Sober and the Harbor work really beautifully with the players that they have here, getting the best out of Com and out of Mazzino. Um, and I think that the way that they play it with Aspas looking to take aggressive post plants is, is pretty perfect. They've really refined this map. It's looking like one of their best, which is why they tend to pick it. Yeah, that's why you're seeing it first as well. I mean, if we even get it over towards Sunset as well, that'll be an interesting one. But shouldn't be anything out of the ordinary, I think, from these Icebox comps. They didn't introduce the exploding barrels with this patch, so <laughs> nothing, nothing one day, to take up the meta too that. much. One day, we can only hope. <laughs> but, but yeah, really watch out in this half when crew are on the attack for them inserting Kesnit on Jet towards Yellow, and then they leave him, go over towards A, and Kesnit looks to try to either get lurks or kills, and then open the map up so that they can rotate back to him. I, I'm, I don't know exactly who is gonna step up from the uh, Leviathan side to anchor that part of the map, but if you have people like King, for example, which would be standard playing in that area, they've got to watch out for the firebrand from crew. Might even just try and set up, uh, you know, these deep lurks, I think, for Aspas on the defense as a jet. Give him a lot of space early on over towards A, main. Mid-round information that your team can work off. You can stack players over towards B as an answer in response to it. Uh, I think that this might just boil down as well to that battle head-to-head -head between the two duelist players. And my God, do they have some beef between them. We, folks, are ready for map number one, and it's a trip to champions on the line in this series. Let's send it over to your casters, Doug and Baby Bay. Thank you so much, Mitch. Familiar foes will fight today with everything that's on the line. We've got to talk about it. The desk mentioned it, too. They've clashed a couple of times. Every single one of them, Dre, has been close. It's been three maps every single dance. Yeah, and speak about the first map, Icebox. Last time these two teams went against each other, it was also close. 13-11, yep. the way of Leviathan. The key difference in that match, we had a Heat who was absolutely dominant yesterday. But in that match specifically, Heat was 8-21. That's rough. That one of those wasn't roughest yesterday. showings he's had. Exactly. Yeah. So going into this specific map right now, Heat, if he brings that momentum and that fire that he had yesterday, this could be a different story for the side of crew. Yeah, you know, for as much as we talk about Kaznid and Aspas, and for good reason, as you were mentioning, it really was Heat who kind of took over yesterday. So seriously, we'll see how that clash ends up as crew is on the attack. Already a little bit of space denied from Nevithan at the beginning of the round. The dart over the top, very aggressive. Yeah, four members on the CT side, pushing all the way through. They want to get this fast Don't flank, run. and the reaction from Crew is ample and correct. Tex has to be up. cautious here. He's the only one out towards B. He's playing his time and his position very cautiously, as he should. Yeah, he gets picked off here. The retake is almost nearly over. It's just so tough. And I think they're aware of this, right? Because Crew, they had this game plan going in in the last series that they played Icebox on, where they just take all that snowman control, mm. kind of flip the site in a way. And look at how far up Melzer is. He's going to be the first to take contact, but he's got such a good place for an orb, too. Meanwhile, Aspas over the top, perched up, winning the first bout in that head-to-head -head duel. Between the duelist and Levi, that looks so comfortable. This retake looked as effortless as I think I've ever seen before. They just waltzed their way in. And it's Tex with three in the round, who he was the solo anchor there. He just 
bided his time, just sat in the back, was just chilling pretty much. And man, he struck at the perfect moment, getting three into the round, the flank onto Snowman. This is good protocols and good prep from the side of Leviathan already. And that was again where crew got what they wanted. They got out onto the site for free. They got into really aggressive post plant positions or denying a lot of space back in spawn, as you were mentioning. That's, I know it's just been one round, but that's a really alarming start. Yeah, it's a hard read pretty much. And Tex, like I said, he played it to near perfection. And he's been honestly ramping up in this whole season. Yeah, he started off kind of struggling, but he's really made a name for himself and made sure people understand why he's on this roster. He's been so impressive. Very different Viper wall. Much more vertical. And we've got to talk about the Harbor Viper comp that they then love to run. The fact that they can cycle walls. We'll see these two setups um, very regularly through the defensive side. And then the Killjoy utility behind it too just makes trying to get out onto A borderline impossible. Yeah, and it's so annoying because even when you bait out the harbor wall, all of a sudden the viper wall can come right up like there. Yeah, just like You're that. getting shock darted, you know, and yeah, it's just an eco round. But look, you already dropped your smokes player for nothing. Yeah. You didn't even see anybody yet. It's just very simple when you have those two that you can cycle up and down. And on top of that, the blender as well. The killjoy utility here. Four members leaned here. They're all going to swing together. Kesnit. He's done a little bit of damage. Left him a bit worse for wear, a costly punishment, but it seems like it's all it'll be. Just a threat, just a little bit of pain. And all will go well for Leviathan. They carry two rifles into the next, including a Spectre, barring an upgrade, as they try to scoop up anything that was left. And I mean, all things all good. Yeah, and, and all things considered, good on Kaznet for getting two into that round. That This easily could have been one where it's just a flawless. All of a sudden, the economy on the defensive side just starts growing and growing, and they amass such a lead there that even if they lose the bonus, you know, they can buy whatever they want. So Kaznet doing a little bit of damage there, getting a little bit more warmed up. He got two headshots into that round. A bit of a mild loadout, if you will, right for Leviathan heading into the third. Not not quite the same ferocious mm -hmm. firepower that we've seen in the past where you've got teams running four rifles or sometimes even five and an alt or you know, something like this. This is a bit more tempered. And we'll see if group can punish on it. They've got full rifles, full armor. They've got everything. It's the four-man push again, just like pistol round. This is something you, t you see teams do quite a bit. Sometimes they'll run on the bonus what they ran on the pistol round. That's exactly what's happening. Shy, he's not aware of this. Mazzino gets a freebie. He got wrapped around. He had no real idea. And so again, Tex plays this position very nicely, waits, buys as much time as he can, and they're going to have to retake B. This is a different setup for Crew, though. Remember, they were pushed all the way into Snowman. They, take, they took so much space back in spawn. That's not the case here. Additionally, they've lost a member. Things get notably more difficult. Melcher's waiting just on the other side of this box as Tex tries to take a little bit of space. Pays for it with his life, but Mazzino's on the trade. Now, they then continue to push their way forward. You've got Aspash coming in from mid and Calm on the flank. So consistent with it and finding more value, finding more success. That's a massive start for Lev, man. Yeah, amazing. Getting that pick on to Shy and then Tex once again. He was just sitting in the back of B, almost towards mid, just AFK. He doesn't need to do anything. He's got a turret that's holding his kitchen flank. He's got an alarm bot that's holding Snowman push. So they were aware. They, they can deduct all of Leviathan. No, no one's in Snowman. The players have to be either on site or playing in the back. And Calm, I mean, he did his <laughs> time and time again classic of just going for that late flank. But the timing in which he did it this time around was perfect. Nobody even looking at him. Yeah, Calm just, I mean, he... <laughs> he did his thing. That's how he won a world championship, yeah. remember? You know? The late flanks. It was something that he was getting punished with trying to do on this roster quite a bit in the mm -hmm. beginning of stage one. But it just seems like with more time, they found a way to actually make it work. Ooh, a nice tag right there on a Kesnet, but that light armor by. So, so he doesn't fall right away. I mean, he may as well have 10 HP. I think he had a full armor, actually. Apologies. Oh, he gets that... taken out anyway, doesn't matter. Yeah, that'll do it. Yep. Second shot, the most deadly. You see them trying to explore mid-map a little bit here, too, as Mouser's not finding any space. I think this map has to feel really small for crew right now. Seriously. Even with the space that they have taken. Uh, they're getting picked left and right everywhere on the map. <laughs> Again, Osbos is taking his time on these shots. Crowd's already popping off for him. He's already popping off for his squad. But it's really everybody firing. It's a team effort right now. It's 
everybody sitting really close on the scoreboard. Mazzino sitting at the top with five. Texan Com at four. Picks across the board. My double's dead. Nice shots there from Tex, settling the recoil and the spread. Yeah, Mazzino's had a really good start. I think he, I mean, he has more kills than all of crew do combined. <laughs> Which is, it's a rough start for crew, man. Given how well they looked yesterday, given all of the hopes and possibilities of being one series away. And mm -hmm. yeah, if they lose today, they still have the shot uh, on the lower side of things. But to continue that streak, we talked about it so many times yesterday. They've never missed the champs. Yeah, and this is it. I mean, you've got to find a way to do it either against Lev or against whoever it is that you're going to be playing tomorrow. And both of those are miserable problems to try to solve. And starting off this slow, I mean, you said it, right? Nobody from the side of crew really has anything going. Kesnet was the only, what, shining star in this first four rounds so far where he got the two yeah. Sheriff headshots. Yeah. That's about it. Other than that, they've been getting absolutely insta-killed. Well, and I think obliterated. the problem is, too, we were talking about this er or in the previous round. It isn't just the micro. It's not just the individual duels and the, the gunfights that are going the way of Lev. The way that Lev have played this map has just been so miserable for crew to, ha to try to navigate. And, and that's why you saw the timeout come this early on. They have to adjust their game plan. I think Adam recognized that, okay, these guys are playing for the fact that we like to push up Snowman a lot. They clearly did their prep work. So what are we gonna do about it? We're about to find out right here and now. And that being said, Ospos does has the have the operator online. Kesna, he's gonna face this. Not the dash proc. Gives the space away. Not a ton to fill behind it. So off of that, crew will accelerate a little bit. You've got Kesnet who's already dashed out back yellow. And they've gotten space. And here's the thing though. They've been here before. They've been here a number of times in this half. They have managed to get this much. Mm -hmm. And then everything goes sideways. Now they're even being denied this because Mizino's ult. Yeah, this is a very new look from the side of Leviathan as well, right? This fast. Mm re-aggression onto B, clearing out all that space. And that forces crew all the way back. Maybe but this you... is something that Leviathan are very comfortable with. They're okay with giving you free A site because they can just cycle up those walls or even use the harbor wall on the retake. And I would argue they don't even really have free A. I mean, Shy's not even past 410 at this point. So it's not like he has, he's not like he's contacted all the way up and they're going to be able to call him over and they're going to be able to get into post plans by contacting. This is... You haven't really gotten very much. In fact, I wouldn't be shocked if they try to flip the map back. The problem is they have 30 seconds left and they've got Aspas here with an op. Oh, he can shut down this round by himself. Malzor might creep all the way through though. This wall is gonna buy him a little bit of space. So smart of Aspas to get out of dodge like that. Just wait for his squad to come back. This is phenomenal team play, but Comp, he gets caught lacking there. The trade from Mazzino. Melzer did a very nice job of getting that far back. Left. But again, the spike Five now, planted. just now going down. Crew with the numbers advantage. Aspa still with the op in hand. Tex has been steady, but he will fall this time. And Aspas, I mean, you've got the money. I guess you couldn't go for it. But retaking the 1v3 with an op in a post plant situation feels miserable. Yeah. So Melzer gets his score. Crew finally get on the board. What a great job from Melzer, just sneaking into the back line like that. Catching multiple players off guard. I think that was honestly what three kills that he that he caught players off guard with the only one where he actually had an aim duel was against king in the back of yellow right there so big heads up play from him to win that 1v1 and secure his team to come back and then the way that he was able to finesse around Ospos not giving him that trade and then getting all these freebies look nobody ready yeah. not even Ospos at the end there no you're right amazing positioning and that's what netted them that round what's her response off this Kesnet has blades Aspas again has the op. And this time there will be an early challenge. Does the drone push him off here? Oh, it's gone low. I don't know that it's going to see him. Oh, it doesn't see him, but the re drone might dissuade crew from wanting to take this timing into sight. Only one spotted, but it was the Sova. Whoa. Whoa. Almost catches him. But it's Aspas who walks away, beaten and battered. And that's all the knives gone from Kesnet right now, so he has nothing else to work with. That Sova ultimate will connect on two members. One gets taken out, that was Heat. I mean, they have attempted to put everything behind this. They've tried stubbornly, stubbornly to get through to A. But again, this retake, everything that they have at their disposal just makes Crew so uncomfortable, so unsettled. 
another rare miss from Osmos, but I mean, this round feels very comfortably in the hands of Lev. Yeah, it would take some individual heroics right here. That's why you see MTA slowly creeping up forward. He's trying to pick off any type of member that'll give him a 1v1 right now. Crew were so successful in these numbers down situations yesterday against Cloud9, but Levitan are a different beast. They might convert this though. They've gotten it down to equal numbers. And again, Aspas has one HP. He's got to find success with the op. Gets his one. The trade comes through. MTA has the ult, but he's way too close to lean in on that. King's got to find the snap. And he lands the shots. Not able to pull off the heroics, man. It got close though. Yeah, a 2v4. Brought it down to a 1v1 where MTA, he honestly could have won that. He just couldn't settle the shots. King, he wasn't even aware whatsoever that MTA was to his right side. But if you're going to whiff at this high of a level, King, he's going to take that every time. He's going to run away with it. That's 5-1 to one now. And Mazzino killing Melzer in that Viper's Pit. That was such an important frag into the round. The fact that he got that kill, it was so huge. And King was so steady on that response. As soon as he realizes he's in a really bad spot, doesn't flick and instantly try to spam or anything like that. Mm -hmm. He just settles, continues to strafe. So calm. It's a new look from the side of Lev. It was a fighting squad towards B. Ospos has the B line, and that's what allows for this rotation to come out towards A. Mm -hmm. And this is a way faster pace from the side of crew as well. Bomb grenade out. If they tried to flood, much like they did a couple of rounds ago on B, I mean, they don't have a Reckoning, but they do have Texas ult. So they, that's exactly what they're going to try to do. Both of them traded, Venn diagramming the map. And it's just going to force a bit of a freeze. Oh, easy now. Second time to charm. Mazino will fall. Numbers again, the way of crew. Aspas is going to be joining over a bit late, has blades. So he's not just strapped to the op and crew are cutting noise. I love this so much. But that's going to be the cue. The knife goes out, the dark goes through. Oh, pop from MTA. That will confirm things. Calm will fall. And now there are only two members left on left. King is one of them, though. And he's doing his best to keep them back into the face of two. Looking for three on the round. The fourth not connecting. Aspas with the op, blades popped, and this is Aspas at peak vintage form, delivers once more. The Red Bull clutch for Lev. What was almost a 2v4 for Crew turns into a 2v4 for Lev. Aspas and King putting things into their own hands. And King, man, his movement and the way that he shoots his gun is so beautiful to witness. The, the sidestepping back and forth, the peeking in and out, it's wonderful. And then, yeah, the poise at the end there from Ospos to just connect with the last knife that he had in his ultimate. Vintage play right there. Ospos plus blades in a 1v1 just doesn't feel very fair, does no, it? No, it's not. Not fair at all. I mean, even with the operator, that's a whole nother story, right? Yeah. Six and one now, the way of Lev. Crew have had their chances, but they just haven't been able to convert. You saw a little skin there. Yeah. Can't connect on it, though. Ospos is going to stay, though. Playing really aggressive this round. He's going got, for the eco kills. Yeah, he's got King to help, too. Oh, this one-way drops. Here. He might face two, three members. But he, he picks out way too early on that. Oh, my gosh. MTA going for a trade alone again as well. He's teeing off. Yeah, you cannot be giving Ospos these 1v1 engagements the way that we have been doing it so far. I mean, he's going to hit those shots. That's what he's known for. He loves taking duels. And so again, there seems to be a bit of a freeze onto the round from the attacking side. As noise is cut, they try to explore things. But again, nothing feels safe, man. There's no way Shy's ready for this angle. Oh. Yeah, Tex takes his head clean off. That's such an awkward pre-aim that you have to do if you're Shy. And remember, it was a couple of rounds ago, I believe it was Melser. As soon as they don't get their first hit, as soon as they don't find some of that open space, they try to explore a tube, they try to get into Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Melser got caught a few here. rounds ago, now Shy here. Oh. <laughs> he was looking for something a little stylish, a little yeah. creative. But Lev gave up to seven. And you're right, though. It's been a punish across the board. The middle of the map has been locked down by Tex and Kong on the rotations and whatnot. It's 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 really good to do that on a map like 
icebox around the defensive side if you don't have that control of mid there's so much you need to be worried about you start over investing not only utility but players onto those sites it opens up your extremities so the fact that tex has been able to like basically solo anchor mid or have some type of help you know from calm in the mid round to clear it out it's been a blessing yeah and you may be you know you may be looking at this and saying wait a second crew have now burned both timeouts uh -huh. how bad is the situation if they're both if they're burning both timeouts it's in the bad. first half it's real bad. it's real bad right now it's not even just about i mean macro even this feels like a very serious problem that they're trying to have to solve that Adam is going to try to cook his way through. Yeah, I mean, even at the end there, yeah, I get it's an eco round, but we're, we're swinging one by one. Yeah. There's still a one way up, so it's isolating you from the right side. So even if you want to peek, it's a one way we can see your feet before you even swing out. So right. he, he's jumping the gun a little bit too early. And I feel like this is something that he had a struggle with the last time around when he played Leviathan. I mentioned it earlier, Lev and crew have danced two times this stage, but both of them won all three maps. In fact, mm -hmm. they've played six maps against each other. Half of them were decided by three rounds or less. Yeah. So for this to be this dominant is honestly a bit surprising, but you got Lev on Icebox. <laughs> Things just kind of happen like this. Man. I'm still so surprised that teams do not ban this map against this team, but it's so tough because Lev have such a deep map pool yeah. as well. You're picking poison, really. Yeah, it's 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 tough. But Osboss on Icebox is just something else. I don't blame Crew though, because last time around, Kesnet was actually hanging up there with him. Mm. I think it was Osboss on 28 and Kesnet at 23 in a 13-11 win for Leviathan. So, hmm. a proactive, a preemptive ult invested here by King. Yeah, it's all to deny that plant, but widely so. Crew are going to flip the site, get the spike planted on the left side. But this is so hard to play a post plant with. Yeah, I mean, what do you what do you hold? You kind of have to fight in. You have to. And so even in this, it feels like Lever forcing Crew to play the way they want them to play. Oh, this is so sick. That cascade is all for Tex to take this position. Oh, nice. Get shot fully blind. Oh, Who's that? Unbelievable. And again. Oh, now Osbots is collating. Tex was at third on the round. The defuse is going to come through. I imagine they hand it over, but I... It's clinical. It's, it, it's un... it looks easy. Effortless, some would say. The protocols, they, they're aware that that crew want to flip the site. When the spike gets planted, that one cascade is for Tex to sneak out into right side heaven. Oh, that was such a nasty shot. Tex has been so impressive. These last, I don't know, this last stage two, even at LAN in Shanghai. Oh, yeah. He played great at Shanghai. Yeah, Tex was really good. Tex gets one kill you mentioned, fully flashed there. Aspas got his collat fully flashed too. <laughs> I mean, they don't even have to see the players. Hey, man. It's one of those days, huh? It seems like it, man. Eight rounds up for Lev. Crew are just a shell of the team we saw before, and I think there was a lot of concern around that as we saw them play What's yesterday, the and we thought, you know, maybe they're back, and okay, okay, now this is the crew that people were comfortable with, people got used to, but Cloud9 and, and Lev are not the same no, at it's, all. It's, it's, it's like what Sideshow was saying on the analyst desk, you know, the gap from before when they met, it's been just getting farther and farther yeah. and farther. Lev have just taken this away from a lot of NA teams. They've kind of separated themselves from, you know, the good teams, and now they're they're a great one. So. Yeah, it's gone from like a small gap to a massive expanse. Mm -hmm. And how do you bridge something like that in so small amount of time? I don't know. In most of these rounds, Lev have had the right read. I mean, the utility has been on point to delay and dissuade crew. It kind of has crew having to pause, freeze, going back and forth. Keep in mind, the only round that Lev or that crew won was like that double insert, one at A main, one B yellow. And then they were able to kind of like move around the map, try to get a pick on the extremities. That's what won them the round. Ooh, Osfos. Didn't connect on that one. Whiffs again, but third time's the charm, surely. If he gets a third. Yeah, Spike will be planted here, though. Oh my gosh, but Zeno does not care at all. Takes whatever timing he wants to his own heart. What? Disgusting. Is it, yeah, this is just becoming a frag movie. It is. It is for sure. And crew right now, they have to be hoping, you know, that they have a performance like they did yesterday against C9, where they had that comeback, you know, on on, uh, on Lotus, where they just started bringing rounds back one round at a time. And what ended up happening with that, even though they lost the map, they were able to bring that momentum of just the comeback that they accumulated into the next map, and they closed out that series. So right now, that's the only saving grace for crew because
Man, this is getting deleted. Look at this. Instant. Yeah, you're done. Tex is shooting everyone. Like, honestly, like, they all are. And it has Tex has been. Right, but then I mean, Aspas was doing things like that too, just like a blind off shot Everyone through a smoke. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks like they're having fun and for good reason. Mm -hmm. I and mean, they very well may waltz their way into a champ spot. <laughs> oh my gosh, another first blood from Tex. He's been such a monstrosity on this A site. Another lockdown for him as well. It's unbelievable right now. And we, we even talked about it, what, after the pistol? How it already felt concerning. It already felt like there was trouble. And unfortunately for Crew, that seems to have actualized. Yeah, this is definitely rough. No more timeouts as well. And I think they have a good understanding, Crew, that, you know, Ospos is leaning towards this B because they haven't fronted him at A site and right. Killjoy lockdown was used. So it kind of gives you an idea of what the map looks like, and that's why they're going for the re-hit. Sometimes when a player is so on fire, you just don't want to even go to their site, even though you know he's alone. Yeah, but do you, I mean, the alternative is what? You hit to the stack of three, four. Yeah. And the, the other problem is there's a guy who's equally as hot, who's still playing in the stack, and that's Tex. Oh. But he crumbles at the feet of MTA. Maybe a little bit of success here for Crew. Kesnit tagged up. 30 Somehow left. staying alive as MTA Five commits to the play. Mazino not Last able to settle the shots. Standing. And it's on to Aspas again with Blades in a 1v3. MTA weak. 36 HP, no armor. Oh. Oh. Clean from Kesnit as crew find their second. Yeah, Kesnit. A lot of opportunities Last for Leviathan to punish him. But they just couldn't connect the shots. And if you give Kesnit that time of day, he's going to take it. He wants those engagements right now. He wants to get warmed up. And it's gonna build him more confidence going into the rest of this map and the rest of the series. Some nice shots from him. It was this one, most notably. Too many shots whipped from the side of Mazino. Gives him the confidence to wide swing Ospos there. I like how they approach that 3v1. You don't want to give Ospos that much space to work with and, you know, potentially get a clutch on you. Kaznip popped his blades at the beginning of the round. Mouser has his pit to play around. There's also no interest in contacting B in a 4-1 or anything like that. And they've got eyes set towards A. And it may just result in a similar outcome. Tex and Mazino have already gotten a couple. There's just MTA and he left. That's how these shock darts from Calm, they do so much damage. This setup is too good. The fighting squad of Tex and Ospos on the A site. It's more than enough to... Secure the half. Oh yeah, they get a glimpse of Heat's little head right there, and Tex will jump up on top pipes and take him out. Ten to two half for the side of Leviathan. Switching sides. This is why they're undefeated on this map, Doug. Yes. This just—they make it look easy. What man. is there to say? <laughs> they make it look easy. Again, I think there were there was expectation. There was, I mean, maybe not a ton, but there was some hope given how crew looked yesterday. Given how crew have looked this state, like maybe they're gonna be able to claw their way back into this, but it's been anything but that. We're gonna throw it to a quick break. We'll see if the desk has any hope or any cope that they can deliver on the side of crew. It doesn't look like there's much. Well, folks, this map is giving serious Brother Ooh energy right now. <laughs> Crew Vita are struggling. Uh, we saw that last round. I think nothing more emblematic than that, just how strong Livia looked in that setup on A. 
Crew tried to walk up, contacted, got wrecked. They tried to flash him a bunch as well. That clearly didn't stop Tex and Aspas from mowing him down either. Nothing is breaking through these defensive setups. Lev's defense looks immaculate. As soon as you get Aspas onto an off, even if you flash him, he just peeks around a corner for a second, swings back out because he's just confident. Yeah. You know, the guys on crew are used to bulldozing over people. They swing into somebody, they respect them, and if they don't respect them, they hit the shot. Aspas is just faster. Exactly. I, I think as well, as soon as they win pistol round into the bonus round conversion, get the money going, like you said, Aspas operator in his hands. Oh. Simplifies the entire defensive side calling for the rest of the team. Uh, I mean, Baby was mentioning it. He just takes up the B long line. There was not enough macro play on the attack side from crew to really just try and push him off the line, uh, take away that information into the mid-round for them to work off. Uh, uh, they've just made it way too easy for Lev. Check in on your local Sentinels fans. Oh, they are going to be screaming. They might be getting overexcited a bit too early, but this one looks wraps. We wanted to put Kesnit up against Aspas in the head-to-head, -head, but unfortunately that would violate the Geneva Convention. So you just get the Leviathan Stars <laughs> stats here, and you should be feeling very confident about them. Also, Tex, right? Someone we didn't even have a chance yeah. to talk about. The guy's been literally unmovable, just holding through mid, and also what a incredibly strong... Let's get the second half underway. Back to our casters. Good time, not long time, probably. I don't, I don't know that it's a good, good time either right now, Mitch. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, crew have just, they said it as perfectly as they could have. They've struggled. Man, they look rough. They, and I don't really know what I can expect on the defensive side that's going to necessarily make this feel any better. The, the scariest thing was how the first four rounds that were game planned for Lev had such an impact on the later rounds With of the half. Now. I mean, win yeah, winning the pistol, then converting the bonus the way that they won the pistol. I mean, it was everything. It set themselves up for success. So I, I imagine we're gonna see something like that here. All this prep work, that one cascade and wall, made Kesnet have to pop his dash. So that's not something that he's gonna have for the retake on A. And no one is really here from the side of crew on A besides Shy. I'm gonna take this peek. In the face of Everyone else on the side of Lev. Yeah, there are reinforcements on the way. Shy finding a little bit of space, not I realizing that, yep, that's Aspas right next to you. Did Tex just wobbing it? It's just water that's Wait. keeping them apart. He can and see he can't, the barrel. He can't see him if he doesn't turn around. Oh, what a surprise. Shy finds two, make that three. The pistol heavily leading the way of crew, but somehow even in the face of those heroics, even in the face of those shenanigans, it falls down to ones. And it's Tex with the Sheriff. Put a ball on it, man. Maybe it then continue the slaughter. I mean, normally it's the Aspa show. It's a Tex show today. Yeah. 17 and 6 on the Killjoy. And he has no emotion, completely void. It's just another day in the office for the lad. No, that was Tex with emotion, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was him popping off. He shows emotion in game, huh? How do you. Unbelievable. I think I, I think I, never mind. <laughs> I would love to see that first kill over from Tex, the wall bang. I think he randomly spammed into heaven and got that kill onto MTA. That is so, so weird. Crew have to force, no real choice otherwise. A bulldog, Spectre, Stingers. And there's a heavy stack A. It's honestly what you want, though, especially when it gets scrappy on the actual site on A. There's so many close corners you can play with those stingers. Yeah, Do the sure. little run and gun classic. We've seen players just get absolutely deleted with that gun. The only long range weapon is that Sheriff on Kesnet and the Bulldog on Shy. But I feel like Leviathan, they're, they're aware of this and they're going to bide their time. They're going to try to put themselves in a position where they have the fighting Here. advantage. Maybe with utility, maybe taking longer range angles. Oh, he, you better get out of there, buddy. And they're feeling a little bit of the pressure. And Lev just sniff out what's on the other side, decide to rotate away. Yeah, absolutely. Sniffed out that stack, but they're leaving King here. The double back is the 30 play. seconds left. Crew seem ahead of it. I mean, Kesner's rotating back too, alongside Shy. Yeah, crew aren't biting on this at all. Dark gives them the info. No Only yeah, King gets scanned though. Yeah, but all of the other utility that they're seeing surely confirms their suspicions as Kazmin and Heat are able to open things up at least just a little bit. But of course, lo and behold, Aspas gets another couple. Ten seconds left. With just a few moments left in the round, they have to commit to try to get the spike down. And I don't know that they're going to find enough comfort. Never mind. Tex is here. What did he eat today? I don't know, bro. What is he been eating all season? 
Maybe he can get up to 12 in the face of the force. I mean, this is done. Oh, he's playing aim lab in the server right now. It's like training bots for him. He's just in the open, exposed. He had a he had an outlaw. He switches to his sheriff. The better just, weapon. Yeah, he's Literally. just flicking left and right. This is a form I don't think we've seen Tex actually achieve. Is this peak form for him right now? Or, it might be. Or have we not seen his peak yet? That's the scary Keep thing. Them right here. He just quietly right continues here. to get better, but hey, he's being plenty loud about it now. There was so much skepticism around Tex joining this ro roster, and if yeah. he actually belonged. Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! It's a slaughter. Dre, I'm gonna let you take the play-by-play -play for the rest of the round, <laughs> it's man. It's an absolute slaughter. <laughs> by all means, brother. But now you see, after Osboss gets those two picks, there's a freeze to the round. Then Tex, he's slowly creeping up towards A site. Three members of crew stacked towards B. Drone was used from Calm. He's waiting for that rechargeable dart to come back online. And look, the macro gameplay King is calling a phenomenal game on top of the individual prowess of every single player on this squad. He's double and positive right now, too. Yeah, they're hitting the site where no one's at. I mean, this is <laughs> this is looking yet. like all she wrote. Yeah, this would be a very poetic way for this map to end, wouldn't it? Unbelievable. What a fast map. This might be one of the fastest maps in VCT. They got dinner plans or something. I don't know. Whoa, where, where are we looking? Boss boss. Three to the round. Where's Shy? Come here, buddy. He almost hit that, too. Oh, that's it. Osbos with 40 closes out Icebox once again. 13 to 2, the way of left. I mean, that, that didn't even feel like a. a Hydrogen bomb to coughing baby. That, that's a way worse. It's a wash than that. Complete wash. I don't know that we've seen that level of dominance in a map this important in a really long time. And Seriously. It, I mean, if this is the form that Lever carrying, not just into the rest of this map, but the rest of this match and the rest of the year. I mean, yes, it it. It's just one map, but they're putting the world on notice here. Yeah, all the coaches from international stage, exactly. The entire world are looking at this right now. And they're looking at the form that Lev are in, and they're scared. 13-2, the way of Lev on Icebox. Maybe Sunset we will tell a different story. We'll see you guys in just a bit. Every time I needed a new phone, I had to switch carriers. I told him, at Verizon, everyone can get the best deals. Like that iPhone 15 on them. Switching all the time, it wasn't easy. 35. You're gonna be here forever. I know. Here's your wireless contract. Do I need a lawyer for this? Those were hard days. Representative switch. Now that I got a huge storage and battery upgrade, I'm officially done switching. New and existing customers get iPhone 15 on us when they trade in any iPhone, any condition, guaranteed. I really wish you told me sooner. I did. Red Bull gives you wings.